Thanks. And then I would like to hand over, and I need to look at my notes. I think I can hand over now to, I don't even know. Sebastian, Simon, are you the next one, or am I just making it up? That's correct, yes. Yeah, good guess. OK, well, good luck then. Thanks very much. Yeah. Can you make me presenter? Um, because I cannot share my screen at the moment. I think the technique in the back can do it. I'm not sure how. Okay. Good luck. Thank you very much. I hope you can I can see my screen. So uh, it's yes. a pleasure. perfect. Thank you. That's good. It's a it's a pleasure to uh, to. To meet you at, uh, at the bio atelier and um, I, in the next minutes um, I'm, uh, I want to speak about the uh, uh, next generation cytogenomics and the technology of um, of bio nano which is called optical genome mapping and uh, the way our technology works is not based on sequencing and is comparable to uh, to karyotyping but at a much higher resolution with uh, karyotyping, uh, which you can see here on the left, uh, chromosomes are stained in a way that you can distinguish a pattern of bands which are unique throughout the whole genome uh, with a band size of approximately five megabases. And every abnormality uh, in this pattern would indicate a chromosomal alteration. And the same way um, optical genome map mapping works, you have a unique um, um, labeling pattern on the DNA which is applied uh, throughout the whole genome, and uh, with a, with a, um, with a every five uh, kilobases, and will be scanned and analyzed automatically with our um, uh, Sapphire system. And similar to uh, karyotyping, every abnormality in this um, pattern will indicate uh, chromosomal alteration. Uh, the the benefit of the technique is that you have a ten thousand fold improved sensitivity compared to other uh, cytogenomic uh, techniques and you don't need culturing, you have no amplification steps, you have no denaturation of DNA, and you don't need to, to design probes such as uh, fish probes. And this is how it works. On the left side here, you can uh, see electrophoretic uh, cycles that are applied to the labeled DNA molecules that will be linearized in, in, in parallel in one of the uh, hundreds of thousands of nanochannels that are engraved in our chips. And this allows the acquisition of a huge amount of data uh, within one run. And by running the instrument a little bit longer, you can increase the output yield to levels that simply outrange the coverage of long read sequencing technologies. And you can go up to 100, uh, 1,600 fold uh, gene coverage with uh, no extra costs. Uh, on the right, you can see uh, this is the, the Sapphire system where everything uh, takes place. And this is a raw data picture with, with the, the linear DNA counter stained in blue with a unique uh, fluor fluorescent um, labeling pattern. Uh, another major difference to long read sequencing is the size of the molecules that we image. Uh, they are above uh, 200 to 250 uh, KB. So we have the, uh, even the lux luxury to disregard any molecule that is smaller than 150 KB for our analysis. So we combine, combine all you need to address cancer or complex uh, mosaic samples, uh, long read information or ultra long read uh, informations and high coverage uh, for a few dollars per sample. And by that, revealing the, the, the true structure of the genome. So I'm going to quickly show you the workflow, how it basically works. The workflow is extremely simple. You extract the DNA uh, with our DNA isolation kits to obtain ultra high molecular weight DNA. In the next step, the DNA is labeled with our enzyme called DLA1, uh, putting a fluorophore on, every, uh, on a specific six base pair uh, uh, motif. Uh, and this is where the specific labeling pattern is applied to the genome that I showed you before. The state DNA is then loaded on a ship, which you can see here, uh, where all the nanochannels are engraved, and from there the rest is done completely automatically. The molecules are imaged, uh, aligned together based on the labeling pattern, 
to construct in the end a consensus map, which we uh, which we display in blue and which we call the optical map. And in parallel to, to this process, we also uh, measure the dosage genome-wide, the genomic molecular dosage genome-wide to detect any large gain or losses uh, of genetic material. And ultimately, the optical map here in blue is compared to a reference map in green, um, which can be, the reference can be control tissue or simply a reference a genome like HG19 or HD38. And this comparison is the step that will uh, identify any deviation or um, uh, in the labeling pattern that indicates structural variations in the sample. And this is uh, the way how we represent map alignments. We always display uh, the optical map, the assembled map in of the sample uh, in blue. The reference is always in green, and we can detect any gains and losses. Uh, higher than uh, 50, uh, 500 base pairs. If you have a, if the distance between labels to the uh, in the comparison is is shrinking, you have a deletion. The other way around, you have a, a insertions like uh, an insertion like is displayed here. We can also detect copy, uh, copy number variants, um, like repeat array expansions. We can detect tandem duplications, uh, translocations. Um, when your maps align uh, to two different genomic lo locations. So you can see the, that your uh, reference optical map is aligning to one location here and to the other location here. Uh, and we can also um, uh, detect inversions. As I said, we detect uh, with the de novo pipeline uh, structural variations greater than 500 base pairs. For uh, complex samples, uh, we um, detect um, SBs higher than. Uh, 5kb uh, with down to a lead fraction of 1 to 5%. And uh, again, you can also detect any large variation in the copy number by looking at the coverage, which you can see here, which is always running in parallel. Um, the performance of optical genome mapping or the power of optical genome mapping uh, to detect structural variations missed by uh, NGS or by long read sequencing in particular can be observed in, in a result from a recent publication from the Human Genome uh, SV Consortium. Um, in a well characterized cell line, this, the sequencing based method uh, based on PacBio HiFi in this case missed about one fourth, so 28% of all structural variations that were missed uh, overlapped with complex regions in the genome and that were known to cause microdilution and microduplication um, syndromes. And I'm going to show you uh, for the software how such typical result would look like. Uh, I hope you can see my screen. So this is a typical, uh, a typical um, view when you have analyzed your optical genome mapping data. You will get a, a, a nice overview of the genome in a, in a circus plot. So you have all the chromosomes, 1, 2, 22, and X and Y. Uh, you have the cyto, uh, cytogenetic bands. Uh, thereafter, you can see color. Excuse me, Sebastian, but I think we don't see your, your screen. Oh, OK. That's bad. Why? Let's try again, maybe. We actually see our uh, present uh, the screen of your PowerPoint presentation, but not what you are trying to show us on the software. Let's see it. I hope you can see it now. Yes, now we do. Oh, perfect. Sorry for that. So this is a typical uh, result from our analysis. Um, you can you will have a circus plot in the overview of all the structural variants. Um, all the uh, colored dots that you can see uh, indicates uh, different structural variations that you can see here as well. Uh, you have a copy number variant uh, analysis in here and in the middle of the circus plot you, you will see translocations which you do not have in this case. And if you want to inspect uh, specific uh, structural variations after filtering and refining your analysis, you can just mouse over uh, such an event as you can see here, you will get all the information you, you want to have. And you can also click on it and you will have a, a detailed uh, genome browser view. So you can see your, um, your, 
your optical map in blue in comparison to the to the reference in this case. And you can see that in this case here you have a, have a deletion. Okay. Uh, so another uh, deletion uh, event uh, compared to what I showed you in the software is, uh, is the D. George syndrome, as you can see here. And uh, with optical genome mapping, we confirmed a clinical known deletion on one allele, which you can see here. But with the uh, with the technique that we use, we also uh, indicate or we could also show something that was never shown before. Uh, in this case, on the second allele, as you can see here, we detected even uh, in, um, inversion. So we uh, we um, uh, could uh, specify even the breakpoints and the structure of this um, of this event. Compared to uh, to insertions or deletions, as I showed you now, uh, repeat array expansions are are way more difficult uh, to handle. And with regard to GC content, uh, one example here, the C9 of uh, 72 gene. Uh, is even more difficult. Uh, this gene, or uh, uh, SVs in this J in this gene copy uh, variation, is associated with uh, AL ALS. And uh, by measuring repeat expansion, um, uh, is extremely di um, difficult and uh, usually done by southern blotting, uh, because sequencing cannot span the whole repeat stretch. And uh, those reasons have been analyzed by uh, by Dr. Mark Abbott from the Mayo Clinic in the, in the U.S. And they, uh, thanks to optical genome mapping, they could resolve a highly mosaic state of expansion uh, repeat in in just one sample of of the patient uh, of the LAS patient. And Mark Abbott could reconstruct five different haplotypes in in one sample with different repeat numbers. And uh, this was perfectly uh, captured by by um, by non-optical genome mapping. Many regions in the genome are completely overlooked by other techniques, or especially by by sequencing technologies, because, um, for example, exons occur in more than one gene or in tandem uh, uh, repeats within the same gene, which making uh, which makes the alignment very difficult. And those. Classi uh, those, those regions are cl classified as camouflage regions, and this is the case for the for the CR1 gene, where uh, the C3B and C4B binding domain is repeated. And the bottom panel here shows a whole uh, whole genome sequencing data set, and you can see that the CR1 gene is uh, 26% uh, camouflage, meaning one fourth of the gene is completely missed by sequencing. And this is highly detrimental because uh, it's it's um, because the the number of binding domains varies uh, between individuals and is associated with the onset of Alzheimer. And this region is simply missed by sequencing, and uh, remains uh, invisible if you just do sequencing. And BioNano allowed uh, Mark Abbott uh, the direct measurement of of the number of repeats uh, for each haplotype in this gene. And he detected, as you can see here, a deletion in this region. And uh, the strength of uh, optical genome mapping relies on the possibility to identify structural variants that are uh, just invisible for other technologies. And with that, uh, it's also able to solve cases which have not been solved for years so far. Uh, another recent uh, example for this is, uh, is the um, Recent published cancer predisposition history of a Dutch family, where two infants developed atypical uh, rupturate tumors, and they underwent several rounds of exploration methods using Sanger, MLP, uh, whole genome and whole exon sequencing, which did not get any genetic driver of their disease. Although the SMARCB1 gene was uh, known to be a, um, a genetic driver, and here they used optical genome mapping. On the cell, a cell line that what was established from these tumors and identified uh, 35 rare structural uh, variations that were uh, not overlapping the control population and are specific for this tumor. And uh, one of the SVs that they found fell right into the or known SMARCB1 gene, as you can see here. And um, Optical genome mapping identifies uh, 2.7 kilobase insertion 
uh, which you can see here. And um, because they now knew where to look, uh, they tried to amplify it by PCR this region to, to, uh, to specify uh, the event, which uh, did not work because it's very hard to sequence. Uh, and to amplify, but with PacBio they could uh, they could gain three reads that uh, first of all um, um, validated the 2.7 kilobase insertion, and the sequence also uh, shows uh, that this was a retrotransposon which jumped into the gene and uh, caused misplicing. So even though this one event, so just the injures, uh, inversion, uh, leads to cancer predisposition in this RTRT is very simple. Cancer samples are more often, uh, often more complicated and complex. And um, uh, this was um, this was done with a study uh, from from the Augusta University where, where they analyzed uh, thirty adult brain tumor tumors. And um, here, the, the group of the Augusta University compared their standard of care uh, microarray uh, oncoscan pipeline to optical genome mapping. And uh, as you can see, this is the result of the oncoscan. This is the CNV result of optical genome mapping. And they were first pleased that, uh, that the result were 100% concordant. So the SNP array scan below and also 100% uh, concordant to the optical genome mapping uh, calls above calling the same gains and losses. And um, conversely, uh, this is uh, one example of one sample that they uh, that they analyze with optical genome mapping. And conversely to FISH, where you need to know where to look, optical genome mapping brings the great additional benefit to detect balanced and unbalanced translocation genome-wide automatically. So every translocation can be directly seen here in the in the in the circus plot. And this brings a whole new level of resolution for the identification of rearrangement. In this case, many impacting uh, well-known oncogenes, as you can see here, and tumor suppressors, and that can be potentially new drug targets, of course. And this is uh, this um, genome-wide uh, resolution that uh, comes with OGM is very, very important for personalized medicine. Um, identification of rearrangement in solid tumors also gives uh, the ability, of course, to identify structural variation also in other complex samples like uh, like heme onc samples, uh, like uh, leukemia. And uh, this work was uh, was done by a group in, in the Netherlands from from Alexander Heuschen. So they analyzed uh, 52 myeloid and uh, lymphoid neoplasm uh, samples. And uh, they also, same as the study before, they showed that BioNano identified all clinical relevant structural variations that were identified by, uh, by, the, by the standard of care methods. So fish, karyotyping, and also microarray. And as you can see here in the, the Venn diagram, um, on top of the 100% concordance, uh, optical genome mapping uh, um, also adds significant new information that were not shown by other technologies or standard of care uh, cytogenetic me uh, methodologies before. Um, here's one example of the study. So they uh, they focused on different SVs. In this case, um, um, I want to focus on a translocation between uh, chromosome 14 and 11 in this case. You can see the whole genome circus plot, but you can also zoom in to just have the two chromosomes and you see a translocation indicated with a red line. And if you click on it, you can see that this is a well-known hallmark uh, translocation fusion protein with cycling D1 that is known to be a genetic driver for leukemia. But they, uh, as I said, they also gained additional, um, additional uh, diagnostic yield. And in the study, they could identify 19 putative uh, novel gene fusions that were not identified before that could lead to leukemia and could also be a good drug, drug target. And for the last, uh, um, uh, another uh, leukemia study in hem -Onc was done by James Broach and Bryn Levy. So they analyzed um, 100 samples of uh, AML and they could, same as all the others that I showed you before, that um, OGM, optical genome mapping, or CEPHIR system detected 100% of all 
clinical relevant uh, structural variations and copy number variations in really all samples that they analyzed. And they could gain or potentially increase the diagnostic yield in the study of about or more than 6% in cases where, uh, where the karyotype was completely normal. And in addition, 40% uh, of the cytogenetically abnormal karyotypes, um, uh, optical genome mapping could better characterize the genomic um, aberrations by refining the structural breakpoints and also identifying unknown cytogenetic elements, uh, um, disease drivers, or uh, marker and deriv derivative chromosomes. So, uh, in conclusion, optical genome mapping is a is a long read technology, and uh, we can provide you with the true structure of the genome, not based on sequencing, but by directly uh, visualizing those long DNA molecules. We can uh, reconstitute the genome and show the truth of the genome structure with overcoming sequencing technologies uh, in terms of, uh, of coverage and resolution. And by doing so, uh, optical genome mapping identifies structural variations that have uh, nowhere to hide, even though the respective genome regions are very complex and hard to tackle. And for that, we provide you with a smooth workflow with automatic data generation with our Sapphire system and uh, user-friendly overviewing um, uh, data analysis, uh, what, what you have seen in what I also showed you in the access software. And with this, I'm at the end and happy to take your questions. Thank you very much uh, for the wonderful talk, Sebastian. Uh, uh, actually, we do have a few questions uh, from the audience. Of course, uh, the first one is uh, uh, probably the uh, question you hear uh, quite a lot uh, from your viewers. and. Uh, it is what is the cost uh, per, per sample for BioNano. And I guess uh, this is, uh, of course, dependent on uh, the uh, specific uh, business case and volume, but if you can provide some kind of a rough estimate so that uh, attendees uh, uh, know uh, how it stands uh, on the market, uh, it would be appreciated. So, uh... You can uh, you, the the, um, the cost per sample is a few hundred euro. I I, I cannot say the the, uh, the the direct price. It depends, of course. Uh, but very important is that you um, um, if you have a sample, uh, you just want to have 100x coverage, or you want to have 1,600x coverage. Uh, the cost did not increase, so you do it by by the same price. I think this is a uh, very important. So it's it's way uh, less cheaper than, than a whole genome sequencing, for example. Okay, thank you very much. The second question is, how do you position uh, bio nanotechnology against uh, other, uh, uh, let's call them uh, long read technologies, uh, for example, the, the nanopore? What, um, what, what do you deliver more? Um, delivering more, it's a, uh, you can say this is a complementary technique. So uh, sequencing, sequencing is limited, not in the case of resolution, because you have a base pair resolution, one base pair. We don't have one base pair, of course. Um, but with optical genome mapping, you can, you can see the structure of the genome, uh, genome wide. And as, 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 as two thirds of the genome are repet or is repetitive, it's very hard to, to tackle everything with uh, with whole genome sequencing also with long read sequencing as, as i've shown you before uh, that uh, one fourth of uh, of every structural variation is um, um, in a, uh, in a sample um, is missed by bio for example i may permit myself i'm very sorry my name is uh, Yannick Dalpi. i'm working with sebastian i, I would like just to chime in to uh, add that as you saw with the science paper we also outperform long read sequencing for the detection of svs so sv will be more uh, performative to detect small svs uh, from the base pair resolution to uh, small indels but uh, pac bio more specifically will miss about 25 percent of the variants identified by bio nano so they will be complementary to provide the sequence 
um, of the SVs that we detect, but Binano would be the one detecting those SVs. Especially the large ones, I guess. Uh, there is also uh, a comment uh, and a question from uh, Miss Baleva, uh, who said, uh, uh, I quote, she's an enthusiastic long-term long investor in bio-nanogenomics. Uh, she, uh, she would like to know how close BioNano is to uh, uh, seeking and getting FDA approval for clinical use of the system, as uh, this would uh, make the advantages of optical genome mapping accessible for uh, many more patients. And of course, uh, likewise, uh, how, uh, how goes and what is the pipeline for the uh, approval in Europe? Uh, so far, we, do, we don't have uh, um, CE-IVD uh, certification, so we are not giving uh, diagnostic um, results. Um, uh, but you can, uh, we can provide you with, with, uh, with uh, so-called BAT files. So if you want to, to have a specific view on structural variations, a clinical relevant uh, structural variation that you in the uh, routine lab would give out for diagnosis, we can help you to provide you a BAT file that is specifically focusing on those uh, regions uh, that can help you to, uh, to, um, to integrate this, uh, to validate this in your lab. But, but still, the technology is not uh, CEIVD. If I may also chime in here, um, the, despite the fact that we are not CIVD, um, there is also uh, a help from BioNano2 um, accompanying you through the implementation of this technology, uh, several sites were very successful developing laboratory developed tests for using routine and either repl replacement or complementation of uh, classical cytogenetics for the identification of SVs in uh, constitutional disorders or uh, leukemia. So we have the example of the KU Leuven that just presented at ECA that just got accreditation to uh, replace FISH, MLPA, PCR, uh, with BioNano, they just use uh, karyotyping in complement with BioNano for the study of ALL in routine. Uh, we have also another site, uh, Medicover Martin's Street in Germany, that went through the same process for constitutional samples. So not being CIVD at the moment is not really a problem because that allows us to be flexible and uh, improve and um, develop the technology in a way that would be beneficial for the customer with, without being too locked down. But um, it is a prof most probably the, the next step for us. So we, this is not an impediment at the moment, but we will get there very soon. Thank you. Thank you very much for your input. And uh, do you think uh, after uh, the event, uh, also you, we, you can share more details about uh, 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 the specific references that you mentioned so that uh, we can share them with the, uh, with the list of attendees? And they can have a look. What reference do you mean? The, the labs? That the different can... sites? Yeah, 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 the sites. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we can do this. This uh, will be the, has, has been uh, the subject of different press releases and that we can forward you. Uh, and there is an upcoming press release for the Q11 that is, uh, that is coming very soon. So we will forward it to you. Thank you. That would be very helpful because the main uh, the main goal of uh, the biotech atelier is uh, uh, networking, exchange of information and ideas, and uh, really we would like to pinpoint uh, some of the most interesting uh, uh, facts and examples from your uh, story and uh, uh, share it to the to the viewers so that uh, uh, they have, let's say, access to focused knowledge and really where the, the uh, the technology is strongest. Yeah, very good. We are happy to share this. Good. Thank you. There are no more questions. Uh, I am uh, really, uh, really thankful for accepting to join us uh, today uh, at the Biotech Atelier, Sebastian. Uh, Thank you. Uh, we hear from each other soon and all the best from us and really big thank you for joining. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you.